Hello and welcome to another episode of Biotalk. Once again, I'm Chelsea Zimmerman and with me again today is Dr. David Prentice. He is the Vice President and Research Director for the Lozier Institute. It's a pro-life uh, think tank focusing on what again? <laughs> Science and Statistics for Life. Science and Statistics for Life. Uh, I don't know why I can't keep that at the top of my head. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, thank you for uh, being with me again, Dr. Prentice. Uh, it's always good to talk to you. Good to be with you, Chelsea. Thanks. And uh, today we're going to kind of uh, talk about, uh, with the election coming up, um, kind of what's at stake uh, with some of these bioethical issues. Um, you know, we always talk about the Supreme Court and how that's important, and obviously the, the president's important, but there are some things, um, some very important things in, the, in Congress um, that you've been keeping an eye on and that come up every year um, that are going to have even some more um, importance and significance in, in the coming years. Um, so one of those things we actually talked about in uh, a previous episode, and it's the uh, Adderholt Amendment. It's the newer one, um, and this is the one that prevents um, uh, genetic engineering, uh, third uh, three-parent IVF, um, and that was done because the FDA was looking at approving it and letting the um, scientists in the United States go through with that, and you and some of your colleagues successfully helped get it into a budget bill uh, the last last year or so. Um, kind of explain again what exactly that that bill is, or that amendment is and does, and, and why it's even more significant now than before. Right, uh, and and again, it, it's the Adderholt Amendment, uh, named after uh, Mr. Robert Adderholt. Mm -hmm. from Alabama. He was chair of the uh, Agricultural Appropriations Committee. You might think, what's that got to do mm -hmm. with bioethics? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because the FDA is funded through agricultural appropriations. Mm -hmm. So as chair of that committee, he took the lead in getting this little amendment put on. It has to be renewed every year since it's an amendment. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it prevents the FDA from allowing these kinds of human experiments to go ahead, as you mentioned, three parent embryos, genetically edited human embryos, mm -hmm. might point out that it doesn't prohibit any kind of, of gene editing tools being used in clinical trials for people already born. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are already a couple of, of trials in the works, mm -hmm. they haven't started yet, but the idea of correcting something like sickle cell anemia or aplastic anemia. Mm -hmm some of these other things, and actually trying to treat someone. But what had been proposed mm -hmm. was not treating anybody, but instead creating new people. Right. Using genetic material from two women mm -hmm. and one man, the three parent embryos, or editing human embryos to uh, essentially make the designer babies that we've talked about before. But now with some of the newer genetic tools like CRISPR, uh, now it's become much more uh, likely that somebody's going to try that. Well, mm -hmm. and they did. Yeah. So what happened was we heard just uh, about a month or so ago that a scientist, a U.S. scientist, oh, okay. had instead gone to Mexico <laughs> because of the Adderhold Amendment. He right. couldn't do this in the U.S., mm -hmm. but he decided he'd just go rogue and, mm -hmm. and go to a country where it's not illegal to create three parent embryos. He did that. Uh, it, we don't know a whole lot of details. Right. He has published a couple of abstracts for the Fertility Society meetings and that meeting will be held later on this month, later on in October. So we don't have too many details. But it looks like what they did was make at least four embryos using these three parent techniques, which by the way are cloning techniques is what they are. Do you know which technique he, I know there's like two different ones, or there's a couple of different ones. For, for this one, he used what's called 
spindle transfer, maternal spindle transfer. So he starts with eggs mm -hmm. and takes the nucleus out of one, okay. transfers the nucleus from a second egg into that first egg. Right. The idea being that you're transferring the nucleus into an egg that doesn't have mutated mitochondria, okay, right. little, little energy factories in uh -huh. our cells. So you're doing nuclear transfer, mm -hmm. it's cloning, cloning basically, right. but you're doing it now with the egg cells and mm -hmm. then fertilizing that. Right. And it looks like they made four embryos, mm -hmm. they transferred one of those embryos to the womb. The others seem to have chromosomal abnormalities from mm -hmm. what little we've been able to find out. Okay. Uh, that actually, that baby, a baby boy, was born several months ago, but they're just now letting the news come out. Uh, why would that be? Well, probably because they wanted to see if he would make it and, right. and seem to be okay for a few months. Because this is pure human experimentation. We don't... Exactly. It's never been done before. We don't know what kind of effects it's going to have on um, children once they're born. And, um, yeah, I can... You, of course they're going to want to wait and cover their tracks and make sure. <laughs> yeah. And who knows if it's been done in other places and it hasn't turned out well, we probably wouldn't hear right. about it. Right. We don't know whether mm -hmm. whether this doctor, Dr. Zhang, mm -hmm. or anybody else has even tried this before right. mm -hmm. to, to create these little embryos using this mm -hmm. genetic technique and then try and gestate them. Right. Um, I take that back. There was an experiment okay. that was published by this same doctor. Okay. It also was, the news just came out, but it turned out he tried this mm -hmm. technique back in 2003. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they transferred three embryos into the womb. Mm -hmm. Well, all three took, and so then they decided to use another horrific technique called reduction, okay. yeah. so where reduction. they went in and killed one of those three babies that were gestating, mm -hmm. uh, whether because of that and, and disturbing the other two that were left alive or because of the technique, neither of those remaining two babies survived. Uh, they both died in the womb. So it didn't work right. before is, is the bottom line, whether they were normal, whether okay. they would have been healthy. We mm -hmm. don't really know. He published this paper in, in the same journal oh, okay. that he's reporting these abstracts in. Mm -hmm. And again, there are a lot of details we don't know. There was even a, a commentary published by a couple of other doctors in, along with his paper mm -hmm. that flat out said that. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of details missing. We don't know whether the, how many times they really tried this. He's describing this one instance, mm -hmm. just like he's now describing this one birth. Right. Um, the other abstract that was published for this upcoming meeting gave us a little more detail, but in this case they talked about they actually solicited women to donate the eggs, mm -hmm. 34 eggs, they don't say how many women. Mm -hmm. uh, about half of the attempts, only half, had normal chromosomes once they tried to even mm do the experiment in the lab. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like there are a lot of problems with this cloning type of nuclear transfer technique. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, as I said, they, they tried it again, had five embryos, only one was normal. That one, the little boy, was born. But as you said, we don't know right. what's going to happen. He, this... Mm -hmm. Little boy is purely an experiment. experiment. They have created him. They've manufactured him mm -hmm. with this genetic engineering technique. Mm -hmm. um, as we said, they had to go out of the country to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the news stories, in fact, this doctor uh, Zhang is saying, well, we went because you can do whatever you want in Mexico. There are no rules. Well, it looks like Mexico's trying to clamp down on that. <laughs> well, that Thank would goodness. Be nice. Yeah. But now there's a story that there are two more little babies gestating in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, they used, in this case, a different variation of the technique called pro-nuclear transfer, right. 
where you actually create two embryos, one that has this genetic problem, mm -hmm. the other one that doesn't. And then basically you kill both embryos and recombine the parts from the two to make a third mm -hmm. new embryo, again yes. with these nuclear transfer techniques. Mm -hmm. So they haven't been born yet. We don't know. We don't uh, know how many were made before they were nothing, implanted? We have, we have no idea about all the background details. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing about this is this wasn't really done to try and get around this mutation in the mitochondria. Oh. They state that this was done to try and, quote, treat infertility oh. in these two particular couples. So there wasn't a problem with the, the DNA mutation. Huh. This was simply that for whatever reason, and, and we don't know, and, and they don't know, neither of these couples were able to conceive and carry a baby to term. So they tried essentially to, to rejuvenate, you might say, mm. the eggs. Oh. But by doing, again, this nuclear transfer, so, uh, so again, you you've create two embryos, you kill them both, you combine the parts to make a third new embryo, mm -hmm. and... Yeah, these babies are gestating now. Will they be healthy at birth? Will they be what born? What will happen to yeah. them in the future? We have no idea. Right. But exactly. we're, we're really seeing the, this kind of a rush to the brave new world mm -hmm. with this genetic editing. And again, uh, taking place in other countries because the Adderhold Amendment got put mm -hmm. on last year to, to prevent them from doing this kind of human experimentation in the U.S., at least right. for now. And it's significant because without the Adder... I mean, the FDA, they had met, and they had actually approved it. Um, That's right. The three, at least with the three-parent um, techniques. And they, they said, we're going to... We suggest that we should let scientists go ahead with it at this point. And so, yeah, without it, without this amendment, that what would be happening right now. We would be yeah, seeing they, this in the United States. There were even some members of Congress who told the FDA mm -hmm. they needed to get an ethics opinion because uh, I think I had told you before when we talked about this, when the FDA committee met to consider it, uh -huh. they kept saying, we only want to talk about science. We don't mm -hmm. want to talk about ethics at all. Right. So mm -hmm. we tried to talk about ethics, but they ignored <laughs> that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we got some members of Congress to say, you've got to get an ethical opinion. Well, they sent it to the Institute on Medicine, not mm -hmm. exactly known for you know, <laughs> an ethical arbiter. Right. Right. I think in all of their various hearings, they maybe had one or two ethicists uh -huh. come talk about mm -hmm. what's really involved. They did talk a lot about how, yeah, these are experiments. These babies will have to be followed for the rest of their life and their children. Right. We'll because be it's punctured. it's a uh, it's an inherited uh, right a genetic difference at that point. That, that's exactly right. Some people call it germline germ line. because mm -hmm. it comes through and can be passed on through the germ cells, the egg or sperm, or heritable. Right. It's an inherited genetic thing that it's affecting not just that individual who's mm -hmm. been manufactured, you might say, right. genetically. Mm -hmm. But it can be passed on to future generations. So, mm -hmm. so again, you're experimenting yep. with human beings, and and what's for the what's, rest of their lives? For these the rest of their lives, yeah. These kids are experiments, and and the it's even more disturbing that they're actually admitting that, and then saying, "Yeah, but we should yes. go through with it anyway." They're right. not. They're not really denying the fact that this is pure, you know, human experimentation, but they are saying it's it's worth it to continue on with this um, right uh, they admit the fact yep. that these babies are genetic experiments huh. and then they kind of go eh, that's okay we're okay with that yeah. just go ahead mm -hmm. proceed with caution right. well there is no caution involved right. here so, they just right. make these little babies mm -hmm. and see if they can gestate them to birth which right. We've already seen one. Now. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that's uh, definitely um, important. It's a, it's a new thing. I know that um, a, it went through under the Obama administration, but I don't think he was um, a fan of it. I think I remember uh, and, hearing and in that fact, he... 
in the the uh, the budget that he put out mm -hmm. for this current year, yeah. they deleted that little part. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, in other words, they were proposing that just remove that mm -hmm. restriction. Now, it looks like Congress will keep it in place, mm -hmm. which brings us to the point that uh, mm -hmm. we've got an election coming up, and it is not just right. the presidency, which will be important for a right. number of reasons we can discuss. Mm -hmm. But it's also your members of Congress in the right. House and in the Senate, and we need good, strong, ethical people mm -hmm. who say, yeah, we shouldn't be doing experiments yeah. on yeah. human beings, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't be creating mm -hmm. new human beings genetically just right. as experiments. Who are, yeah, who are, and who are going to, you know, take that kind of leadership role to to um, to keep something like that in, especially if there is a danger that, you know, it may not um, make it through, and right. um, to, to listen to, um, listen to some of this stuff that's going on, because it isn't, it isn't something that's, you know, on the front page every day it's not yeah. something that that we're hearing about every day but it's important um that we have members in congress that are gonna you know listen to people like um you guys that are up there trying to tell them what's going on and, and to tell them what's important and say look you, you may not be hearing about this every day you know it's not immigration reform it's not you know everything that we're we're talking about in these debates but it's important it's happening now and and we need people who are gonna listen to that and and take that under consideration and, and understand how important that is um some of the other things um that we mentioned that besides the Adderholt amendment would be dicky wicker um, right. which is involves cloning and stem cell research funding and that's another thing that has to be renewed every year it's not something that's generally under um that's generally um in trouble I don't think, but they have tried to, I mean, it, it has been challenged in the past. And right. if, if you get somebody, you know, a, a president in there who is um, um, uh, in favor of this kind of research, or if you have several members of Congress uh, who really want, I know there are several members of Congress who really would like to challenge Dickey every year. Um, if we get even more of them in there, I mean, that's something that that's definitely could be in jeopardy. And in the next couple of years. That's right. And and the Dickie Wicker Amendment has been around now since 1996. Mm -hmm. It does have to re be renewed every year. Right. Like you said, it's been challenged from time to time. Mm -hmm. It's probably been about 10 years since there was a serious right. challenge in Congress. Mm -hmm. But in point of fact, the current president mm -hmm. actually would have liked to have seen Dickie Wicker go away. Right. And even in 2009, when he changed or asked for the change in the mm -hmm. NIH regulations regarding stem cell research funding, mm -hmm. he really wanted to see cloning go ahead and be funded as well. Right. Well, NIH didn't mm -hmm. fortunately follow that lead, mm -hmm. and it was because of the Dickie Wicker Amendment. Right. But we are looking at the possibility with a new president mm -hmm. and with potentially different members of Congress mm -hmm. that there might be another challenge to Dickie Wicker. Mm -hmm. And you know, again that it's an important mm -hmm. barricade to prevent some of these unethical types of research uh, mm -hmm. and your taxpayer dollars going for them right. in terms of making human clones, destroying mm -hmm. human embryos for research and so on. Right. And then the last thing we kind of talked about and and this is more of a major one, a more well-known um, one, is the Hyde Amendment, which right. just celebrated its uh, 40th anniversary. And I know Hillary Clinton has made it a campaign issue, actually, <laughs> this year. Um, she's um, actually said she wants to see the Hyde Amendment go away. Um, so right. that's a big one. And um, you can kind of go into more details. Obviously, it's about abortion funding, but... Mm -hmm. You know more. But and, and, and you're right. It, it's directed towards preventing taxpayer funding of abortion. It's mm -hmm. something, you know, like I say, mm -hmm. this, is, this year is the 40th anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's something that you know, people across the political spectrum have agreed on right. for 40 years. Right. That 
doesn't matter, Democrat, mm -hmm. Republican, Independent, mm -hmm. uh, whether in Congress, mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican, President, mm -hmm. it has passed every year for 40 years. Right. And again, what it does is it prevents taxpayer funding of abortion. Well, mm -hmm. as you've already said, uh, Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. has said she wants to get rid of the Hyde Amendment. Yeah. She has flat out said the Hyde Amendment should go away. Mm -hmm. She's talked about essentially unfettered mm -hmm. allowance for abortion. And, and, you know, people probably don't even realize that the United States is one of only seven countries in the world mm -hmm. that allows that kind of unfettered abortion right, right up to birth. Right. Exactly. But at least with the Hyde Amendment, taxpayer funds. We're not, we're not paying for it. <laughs> right. Don't have to go for it. Well, now, mm -hmm. if she had her way, mm -hmm. a President Clinton, right. President Hillary Clinton, would allow mm -hmm. taxpayer funds to go for this. I and and it, it's, it's interesting. We... We had uh, one of our associate scholars, Dr. Michael New, recently did a study and a paper on the Hyde Amendment. Mm -hmm. How many lives have been saved in 40 years by the Hyde Amendment? Turns out over 2 million wow. people are alive mm -hmm. because of Hyde, because mm -hmm. of preventing taxpayer funding of abortion. Mm -hmm. Currently, that's about 60,000 lives a year. Wow. And, and his paper, which is on uh, our website, LozierInstitute.org, mm -hmm. can go look at for each particular state mm -hmm. how many lives have been saved. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing mm -hmm. barricade against death. Right. Yeah, and it's uh, it's something, again, you said that has, um, has had broad, you know, bipartisan support until recently. I mean, right. well, with, with, with Hillary Clinton, and I know that, I know I read there are there are several um democratic members of congress who who would like to help her um and, you know reach that goal um so that's another consideration and again that's where we need that leadership in congress to stop you know to prevent that that from happening and that kind of thing that's why you know people the the president it's the presidential election and it's a big deal for who's going to be president but we sure. have to Remember, remember to pay attention to some of our, our um, obviously, the Congress is not a smaller election by any stretch of the imagination, who we elect to Congress, but it is, you know, it's, it's very important. And, and even in our state legislatures, um, right. that's where, in the state legislatures, where we see a lot of other um, uh, mm -hmm. laws and things about some of these bioethical issues, whether exactly. it's, whether it's right. cloning or funding for cloning or embryonic stem cell research or, um, uh, you know, allowing for a, even surrogacy and um, just um, third party reproduction in general in other states. Um, they have some uh, regulations and stuff they, that go through the state in, the, in that area. Um, and just paying attention to a lot of, of those more local um, elections and issues there. They're they're all important. So, like mm -hmm. you say, everybody tends to focus on the presidential election, mm -hmm. and and that is very key. Mm -hmm. But then, members of Congress, your members, uh, House of Representatives, your Senate. Again, mm -hmm. we need good, strong, pro life legislators there, mm -hmm. and then in the state level, so mm -hmm. the governor's office right. the and the state legislators, and it's actually the states mm -hmm. where we've been winning. Right. Over the last few years, mm -hmm. uh, one recent count showed over 200 mm -hmm. good pro-life laws passed in the mm -hmm. states. Now, the current makeup of Congress and the White House mm -hmm. at the federal level, you're not seeing that. Right. You're seeing, I think, actually the Adderhold Amendment was the only mm -hmm. little pro-life piece of legislation that got passed during mm -hmm. about the last eight mm -hmm. years. But now, mm -hmm. in the states, we're seeing, like I said, over 200 mm -hmm. solid pro-life laws. Mm -hmm. And some of them are things like uh, prohibiting uh, pain-capable abortions. Mm -hmm. In other words, past five months mm -hmm. where states are saying, yeah, you know, 
you can feel pain at that mm -hmm. point. The science right. is clear. Say, mm -hmm. no, we just can't allow that. Right. Uh, even things like abortion reporting, mm -hmm. uh, notification, right. parental notification, mm -hmm. uh, and then you mentioned things like surrogacy laws. Mm -hmm. This is a big and up-and-coming battle as well, mm -hmm. uh, where you talk about uh, third-party reproduction, and now, you know, we mentioned the three-parent embryos mm -hmm. in terms of genetics, but now right. you could have donor eggs, donor sperm, right. sperm and donor wombs, right. surrogacy, mm -hmm. where you essentially rent a womb mm -hmm. to, to, to gestate a baby. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a big battle that's coming now, and mm -hmm. there, are, there are solid scientific and mm -hmm. ethical reasons right. that right. surrogacy should right. not proceed in this right. country. And, and the other big thing in the States, um, too, is assisted suicide. Right. And that's a, a battle I think we are, have been, I mean, it, it, more assisted suicide laws have been defeated or um, right. not gone through than have gone through. But, I mean, the assisted suicide lobby is relentless. I mean, they do not give up. They don't take no for an answer. They come back, you know, um, they, they don't stop. Um, and it's, uh, you know, and it, even more states are having them on um, in their legislature um, being voted on. I know we talked about D.C. as has mm -hmm. um, has they postponed it, but it was um, it was talked about in in D.C. was the most recent one, I think. Um, so that's another issue in the states that um, that's very important to, uh, you know, get some pro-life leadership in um or make sure exactly. we have, or make sure we maintain it, um, if we have it in in our states already. So, uh, so yeah, those things are important. Judges are important, even on the local level. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know that third party reproduction. There's a lot of legal issues with that, and yes. and they get there's a lot of. I know in the state of Missouri, there's um, but they they have um, like almost like custody battles over leftover embryos. And yeah. um, those things are going to to the lower courts and um, they're having to hear um, cases about those kind of things. And so pay attention to the local um, local races and um, know that those are just as important as the presidency, even probably more important where we're making more headway um, in some of these on some of these issues. Yeah, I, I think you're right. In in many respects, mm -hmm. these local and state races mm -hmm. are more important than the presidential race. Right. Uh, the president certainly can initiate or veto certain mm -hmm. federal legislation. Right. Can obviously appoint mm -hmm. lots of judges, judges at, right. at the the federal level, mm -hmm. but before those cases get to the federal level and certainly mm -hmm. before they get to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. they're heard at the state level, they're mm -hmm. heard at local levels, mm -hmm. that those types of bills that pass mm -hmm. in one state and don't pass in another or are struck down right. by a lower court, that's where a lot of the, these initial battles are set up. Mm -hmm. And we need to be cognizant that we need strong pro-life leaders, mm -hmm. judges, legislators, mm -hmm local leaders, governors, mm -hmm. so that we can maintain mm -hmm. good pro-life laws and a culture of life. Well, uh, it's going to be an interesting, we're in like the home stretch, I think. Uh, I know I'll be glad when it's all over, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I think we all will. <laughs> but it's uh, it's definitely been interesting. Well, thanks for talking to me again and um, keeping up with everything there. You guys are in D.C.? That's right. Yeah, it's just keeping up with everything there and um, staying on top of all these things because it's it's getting scary. Um, but we need to try to stay positive and do what we can. Um, and uh, I'm glad you guys are there, uh, doing what you can, doing what you do. Well, don't lose heart. <laughs> Always be positive and encouraged mm -hmm. because. Uh, the culture of life is an important battle and one that we can't let off. Right. Can't let off. All right. Thank you.